I'm Alex Rapper from Board Game Co. and today we're doing a preview of D Genesis from Simon Games. D Genesis is a two to five player, one versus many skirmish game that will play out across a series of linked games. This is a paid pre preview, this is a prototype, all rules and components subject to change, and I'll have a link to the campaign down below. In this game, you're going to have one player playing as the hosta. You have one player playing as the operatives, or multiple players playing as the operatives, and this play takes place in the D Genesis universe, which is a very popular RPG. There's a whole lot of content on this game. You can check out the channel on it, you can check out the campaign page to learn more information, although you don't have to know any of that to enjoy this game. In this game, one player is playing as the hostile, which I mentioned already. The core box is going to have you playing as the cockroaches, and then you have a variety of operatives who you're going to be playing through, and as your operatives die, they're not coming back, so you have to keep an, a healthy eye on that pool, but you may be able to unlock more characters as you go through the game. The general idea is each mission is going to present you with a set of goals. The hostile is going to know a bit more about what's going on in this mission booklet than the operative players do. They know some triggers that might happen. They have pieces of intel that they can possibly give to the operatives. They kind of are running almost, but not quite a little bit of an RPG. It's got a little bit of a touch of that, but not quite in that in that zone. And the, the operative, the hostile, is going to be running the game to a certain extent with the operative knowing their defined goals walking in. The operative knows what they have to do, but as the game progresses, those things might evolve as you go through it. Meanwhile, you effectively have players controlling their units on this board over here, where the operative is going to be taking turns trading in these edges to take actions in the game. Each edge allows an operative to take two actions, which you'll have access to on this handy dandy little card over here that will give you the variable actions you have access to, which are going to be often a combination of moving, attacking, scouting. Scouting is going to be an important one in this game, because in the game you're often going to be scouting for the other player, for the hostile's threats in this game. The hostile has a variety of threats that are going to contain anything from decoys to traps to the various units you have to fight against. But for right now, it's unknown. There's a dust cloud on the horizon. You see something, you don't know what it is, and you go ahead and take a test, rolling your stat over here to go ahead and scout, although I should note, you have to be in focus mode to go ahead and scout. Operatives will have different sides to their characters as far as that they operate, and that will define the weapons they use and the actions they can take, and it takes an action to switch sides. It's gonna be one of the actions you can take with those edges. You'll go ahead and roll to see, you'll check the distance, you'll see if you have to turn something over, you'll turn something over and you'll see, oh, that's a trap, and because you've revealed that trap, it gets removed from the board instead of having stepped into it and possibly having an ambush hit you instead, which is not going to be fun for the operative player. And so the operative has their defined goal. In the very first mission, you can check out a playthrough as we have on the, on the channel as well, but in the very first mission, the operative is going to be walking in trying to kill five of the cockroach forces, versus the cockroach over here has to go ahead and give a trauma to one of the operatives, which is bringing them close to death, but not quite death. That's going to be the way you take them out. And so they have their goals in the game, although those goals may evolve or shift things might happen as the game progresses. As you step into a zone, the operative, the, the, the hostile might read out a degree of text of something that happened. As events happen, as you accomplish goals, you might have new spawn points, new exits, new unlocks, you might have different things happening in the game. There is a degree of evolved storytelling that is happening in this game while both sides try to accomplish their goals. Now, meanwhile, as you have the operative player trading in those edges to take their actions, which again is going to be a combination of moving, attacking, scouting, flipping to the other side, things like that in the game, you're going to be trading those edges over to the, the hostile player, and the hostile player can use those edges to react to their turns. But they do have some flexibility to how they react. They don't have to react right away. Generally, they can hold on to a number of edges equal to the number of operatives in play, which effectively means the more flexibility the operatives have, the more flexibility the hostile has as well. They can use that flexibility to time up a sequence of a bunch of actions all at once to be able to catch the operatives off guard and actually start inflicting those wounds. You see, the operatives are stronger. Inherently, they have more health over here. These cards over here are going to be abilities, but as they take wounds, they're also going to flip over one at a time until eventually, once you get one of them, that's a trauma and that's a dead player. And yes, you do have an In Memoriam card over here, which recognizes their death and uh, keeps a little bit of a record of it for uh, all the people at the table. But you're going to be operating with stronger operatives. They are stronger. They can do more. They have better weapons. But what the, what the hostile has going for them is sheer numbers. The hostile can spawn more. They can throw out more decoys, more traps. They can activate a lot faster in the general things as to what they're doing. They're weaker. They'll die faster. But if you set yourselves up right, you can make things very difficult for the operative player. You can ensure that you swarm the operatives, that you have a bunch of operatives over here swarmed by a bunch of enemies who, sure, they're easy to kill, but you still have to spend time killing them. And look at that. Now there's an enemy in your zone, which means you have to be mindful of the fact that 
this enemy in your zone, that enemy is going to have a sucker punch. There's a concept of the game called the sucker punch, which is effectively an attack of opportunity. When an operative tries to move, or this goes for both sides, when a player tries to move or take a ranged attack, when there's an enemy in their zone, there's going to be a sucker punch, which is a free attack by that player, and you're going to rely on that as the hostile to be able to bog down the operatives as you try to do everything you can to possibly take them out. They're stronger, they have more flexibility, they have more abilities, but you have more units. Now these threats, they start off as threats, but as things are revealed, as a player reveals threats, you're going to go ahead and, actually that's a decoy over there, and that's a trapper. We're going to go ahead and find a trapper over here, let's find this guy, we're going to put a trapper into play, and boom, now you have an actual enemy unit on the board to deal with, which is good to a degree because the operative needs to take out those units, and while they're threats, they, they, they have a bit more cover going on. In fact, you can't actually shoot or attack threats directly, but you do have weapons that deal area attacks, and those weapons can attack a zone, but when you're attacking those zones, threats have a little bit more defense, meaning they're harder to take out. You can do so, but it requires a bit more work and dedication. And so you, as the operative, are trying to accomplish your goals, trying to take out as many of these cockroaches as possible, and again, mission scenarios will vary as far as how they, how they do things, but you, as the hostile, are trying to overwhelm the operative with the sheer numbers and with the board positioning. You're going to be trying to both play to your strengths, and again, as the uh, hostile over here, you're operating with an entire board full of abilities of the various characters you have in play, although you won't necessarily have all those characters in in every single mission, but you will have a variety of abilities from your abilities on your specific types of units. You have different classes of units. You have your feeders, your swarmers, your warriors, and you have different abilities on the classes. You have abilities on the individual units, and then you also have an ability for your faction in general. And all of those are going to be things you're using towards the advantage in the game. But meanwhile, the operatives are doing the same. They have their focus side over here. They can flip over to their, their other side, to their primal side, and they can use those different sides and the abilities on those sides, which will possibly modify their stats as well. Sometimes in primal, you're a bit easier to hit over there, a little lower defense when you're in primal. Speaking of attacking, and defending over here, in general in the game you're going to be rolling dice against an enemy's defense. And to that end, you're going to be rolling whatever your pool of dice is, so in this case Teamer is going to be rolling two black dice, plus his weapon is going to have one, one white die, so if he's doing a ranged attack against his own, he'd roll these three dice and he'd have to be, well that's an attack of four over there, and that can possibly power through anything that has a defense of four or less, and it's an area attack, which means basically everyone in the zone is at risk of taking a lot of little damage over there. The flip side is he's going to go ahead and get hit by this, although this is, that, this is Teamer over here, if we swap these over here, the flip side is he's going to go ahead and hit by this person with a sucker punch for taking that attack. So there's that trade-off of you can wipe out a bunch of units, but it might be worth that sucker punch. But the flip side is if you roll this side over here on that die, on an attack, you will completely fail the attack, and not only that, your weapon will get damaged as well. And so you are playing around with that as well. Now this is where you're going to have these cards that you can trade in for various benefits. This is a whole deck of cards full of powers and abilities over here, and you can get those. There's a few ways you can get those. I kind of briefly touched about how at the beginning of the game, there's this concept of intel. You read a story and then you read certain flavor text around certain things that could happen to you in the mission. And those things are all things that the operatives have to sit there and say, that sounds interesting, tell me more. And in doing so, the hostile will draw one of these cards, they'll have a card that gives them an ability they can use, and they're powerful, fun abilities over here, but the flip side is the operatives will get a little bit more information. Maybe something doesn't happen that would have happened. Maybe they find out a bit more information about where enemy units are. You are trading in opportunities for the hostile for opportunities and knowledge for the operatives. That's going to happen at the beginning of the game. But also, as you play through the game, that's going to happen as well. You see, every time you roll dice, the size of the opportunity to push them a little further, and you can either roll an additional die of any color, and we have white are the safest but weakest dice, black have a little bit of risk, only one side will bust over there, but the rest of them are all nice higher numbers, and red has two sides that will bust, which is a little bit more of a, of a risk that you might want to take. But you have the opportunity to go ahead and gather an extra die, or to secure a die. Securing a die means that you can ignore one of those busts over here, which can be helpful, especially when you're rolling a bunch of dice, but in order to do that, in order to get that extra card, that extra die, or to secure a die roll, you have to give the other side another one of these cards, and like I said already, these cards are very, very powerful. They are situational, but they can be powerful, which means you might be handing your opponent the thing that he needs to immediately take you out, or something that might be relevant five turns from now, and the problem is you don't know which is happening until you've actually done so. That's the basic idea of the game. There's going to be a whole host of gear going on, so you have different gear, you have armor that players can wear, you also have uh, units on the side. The Snatcher unit can, instead of dealing a wound, can cause an opponent to lose one of their pieces of gear or equipment. And that could be a fun little tool. Maybe it's more important to take out the armor so that you can actually go ahead and inflict Teamer with chemical attacks because it's armor defense from chemical attacks. You have to make those decisions and trade-offs as you play the game. Meanwhile, you're constantly trying to pace yourself as far as which actions you take, who app operates in what order, when the hostile chooses to react and take a reaction turn and trade 
in those edges for a bunch of attacks to be able to set up their board positioning, to be able to take advantage of whatever they need. But ultimately, both sides are trying to use whatever they can to their advantage in order to get one foot ahead of the other, one step ahead of the other player and accomplish their goals at which point you go to the linked mission. That's where you're gonna have a different degree of missions in the game. And I'll go ahead and show you this briefly over here, but in this one over here, we have an arc, a mission arc, that's going to look like this over here. So if you see over here, you can see, don't get lost. We have first blood, tip of the spear, possibly leading into Lamb of God, and then River of Dread. That's going to be the campaign arc you have in this particular sequence of missions, although they can be different. So it's either gonna be three or four missions, and those extra missions represent opportunities of things you might be able to discover, but may or may not need to, and so you can choose how you engage with them. You may not even have the ability to unlock those depending on how the missions proceed because at the end of every mission depending on what happened you will be given legs up on the next mission things you can do or things you can get depending on how things went in those first missions and that's basically how you play D Genesis Clan Wars. That's the overall idea of how the game goes. There's going to be a lot of other things you'll unlock or carry through. There's a lot of keywords we didn't have to get into. But this game, if you're looking for a game which, as the hostile, you're going to be controlling a large swarm of characters who are often hidden, and you're taking advantage of that hidden knowledge in the game to properly set yourself up so that you can be able to sweep in and accomplish your goals, if that sounds appealing to you, or alternatively, if you're playing as the operatives. And again, it could be a one versus many, which means you could play this as a two versus two with one player controlling anywhere from a lone operative Operative up to all four operatives, or you can play with as many as four different players on this side, controlling different operatives, all utilizing their abilities, planning together while they try to take advantage of their synergies as their opportunities, all while trying to decide who's going to win, the stronger side, or alternatively the more overwhelming side, as you play through D Genesis Clan Wars. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This has been a paid preview of D Genesis Clan Wars. I'll have a link to the campaign, campaign page down below, and until next time, I hope you have a good one.